Let's begin this. Welcome everyone. Sounds like a mentor in a church. <laughs> the music that's going on. We are gathered here today to see 6502 be united with modern IDs. Okay, let's begin this. What have we got here? Hallowed light under the hallowed light of the blue screen. <laughs> yes. Uh, hey, Mr. G, Prince Faze, Eldritch, Russell Mills, Akmafin, Amok, Foray, Doxter. Oh man, I really got to figure out a better way of doing this. Prow Seven. Uh, it is. This is a church tune. Uh, Andy Magic Knight as well. Getting the raffles going. That's good. Uh, Retrophaser or Retrophaser Eldritch, uh, Zendaric, uh, Zerfall, Preach It Brother Simon, <laughs> uh, Automatic Greeting Bot. I just need a way of getting all the all the names together. Uh, and Mentat of Dune as well. Welcome, dude. That's sweet. So, yeah, that's what I need because it just gets lost so quickly in the. Uh, in the deluge of a uh, shimmer shilling spam. Well, that's fine. So I'm drinking some cider tonight. <laughs> oh, I like I like how it read that out by name. So yeah, but not everybody. So some people are bots, um, and some people. Um, don't speak straight away. So I, I only want to greet the people who speak straight away, just in case some people want to lurk um, secretly. That's fine. Thank you for the bits, uh, Amok. Very much appreciated. And yeah, that's the first thing I'm going to look at, actually. So thank you for the reminder. Uh, and thanks for the host, Andy Magic Knight, as well. I can pretty easily write something in my uh, in my overlay to do it. It's not. Uh, it's uh, it's it's not. It wouldn't be difficult. I have added 140 more games to the um to the quiz tonight, so we're 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 up to about 460 games now. Um, and I I'm through the list of 30,000, so obviously I didn't know as many C64 games as I thought. So um, what I might do is uh open up to you guys if you've got a if you've got a kind of slightly obscure game that you don't think everyone will know um, but you'd like to see it in the quiz you send me a screenshot and uh, let me know what it is and I'll, I'll put it in the, in the game if it's not already in there it might already be in there I did toy with the idea of um, saving the list the randomized list between sessions so it would continue so you wouldn't see repeats until you've gone through every single game in the list but then I thought about it and thought actually I kind of like the fact that it repeats some uh, as long as it's repeats in between streams and not on the same stream, so I've kind of left that out for now. So actually, let me let me start the the race and quiz. Um, I've also made a change as well. So if you do guess early, um, it clears the picture so everybody can see what it was. Oh, <laughs> old school coder. Mr. Speaker, well done. Um, thank you for the raid, old school coder. You've been doing some more um, Jeff Minter uh, grid runner stuff tonight. Is his brain sending you mad yet? Um, I know people diss Minter's code uh, for being a bit messy, but let's be honest, if we were as wasted as, as he was all the time, um, I think we'd write code like that as well, <laughs> to be honest. Oh, well, saying that, I do get drunk quite a lot, but... Uh, it's a slightly different thing being drunk to uh, tripping your balls off while you're uh, while you're writing some, which is the only explanation I've got for some of his game design. Oh, I do like this one, Old Moot Kiwi and Lime. Very nice. I think it's, uh, I think it's New Zealand. Yeah, the wasted stuff was a myth. I, I think his brain is, is just broken anyway. I mean, if you look at the design of his games, it's there's something not right with his head.
Okay, cool. Right. So what I wanted to do tonight, first of all, let's let's go and uh, just check the IRQ stuff. Uh, so it's having a discussion about uh, NMI interrupts. Yeah, pardon me. Um, and yeah, they are indeed not being set. So I need to set these. So the easiest way to do this is to just put a label um, on an on a RTI like this. Um, I'm going to call it music. I mean, music only is fine. Uh, and then all you do is when you set your multiplexes up, you just do uh, when you set your IRQs up, you just do one for NMI that just points to the uh, points to the uh, to the RTI instruction. And what this does is it means if you press restore during gameplay, it doesn't crash then. I think it's A and B. I need to double check that. It's either A and B or C. Wait, C, D. Yeah, I think it is A and B. Let me double check. It's one of those things I do once per game, so. Yeah, it is A and B. Okay. C and D is the cold reset. Which I should know from doing easy flash cartridges. Uh, I'll put a score. <laughs> and let me add points to you all as well. Oh, oh my god, I can't type. There we go. Cool. So, so that's pretty much all I would, all I needed to do here. I do need to check this on the pick and mix game as well. So if someone wants to remind me that um, on Saturday, we'll check that as well. I'm pretty sure I've already done it in pick and mix, but I, I need to double check. This is just a warning you're having a beer. Oh dear. Okay. Okay. So what I wanted to do tonight is, is um, work on potentially two areas. So one of the things we, we, we're going to need to do quite a lot in this game is, is work out the distance to an object. So um, a distance routine, a fast distance uh, calculating routine would be handy to have. Um, I've got some ideas of how best to do that in the context of this game. Um, but the other thing I, I'd, I'd like to do, um, and this kind of goes hand in hand with the distance calculation, is work on the stuff that is... Um, that is kind of unique behaviors for um well not unique but um shared behaviors it's definitely not unique they're shared um shared behaviors for certain objects on the screen so one of the things in the game that um oh i've got a big smudge on my screen uh one of the things in the game um it, so far that we haven't activated yet is these little mines down here so these these round balls here. So what these do is when you get close enough, look, so you can destroy them, although we haven't we haven't applied any materials to them yet, so they, they won't be destroyable as they stand right now. But um that's something we, we can add in uh later. It is it's not gonna affect this this next piece of work anyway. Um But one of the things that they do is when you get within a certain range of them, they flash red for a couple of seconds and they may explode. And you need to get out of the way of them when they do that. So in order to do that, I considered just having um, a behavior for these that's always running. And then I thought, well, that's probably not that efficient because then you need to, for every screen, you need to um, you need to call this routine anyway. Even if there's not, even if there's none of these on the screen, you'd still have to call that routine so it could then check that there was none and skip over it. Um, and that could potentially have um, a loop that it needs to go through, or at the very least, an, an end byte that um, <laughs> an end byte that it has to register. But either way, there'd be a jump into a subroutine and a return from that subroutine. So what I thought about doing was using um, illegal opcodes for this. And the way this is going to work, I think, is there's going to be um, a section in our game loop. So let me just open up. Two columns. 
Uh, let me just pull some stuff in here that I need. So I'm going to need zero page, almost definitely constants, probably tables as well. Oh, wow. <laughs> Another aid. Hey, Don, thank you for the raid, dude. Welcome along and welcome everyone that's come along with Don. What have you been up to? Oh, I saw what you were up to. Actually, you were playing Wonder Boy, weren't you? Um, how's that stand up, actually? Because I used to love that game. It's one of those games I'm afraid that when I play it, it's if I play it again, it's not going to live up to what I remember. So but I remember it being really good. I can't remember which one I played. I can't remember if it was Wonder Boy or Wonder Boy in Monsterland, but I definitely played one of them quite a lot. It came on the compilation tape that I had, um, and I played it a lot. Um, it was great back then, still great today. I might give that a try again at some point. I might I might sneak a go of that on something um on my GPD, wherever that is. It's on the shelf behind me, I think. Um because I, I really did enjoy that game. It was hard though. It was I remember it being really difficult. I couldn't get very far in it at all. Um Yeah, cool. Thank you for the raid anyway. Um so we're we're just in the middle of, I'm just discussing um this part of the game, uh, Chepanoid, which is a support we're doing from, um, well, it's originally it was a Steam early access game, uh, well, a Steam uh, green light or whatever they call it now, uh, game. Um, and then it's recently, been, then it was released on Android and iOS, and recently it's been released on Switch. Um, so we're just doing, um, we're, we're just doing the C64 version now, which obviously has some limitations, but, um, we're getting there. It's it's looking all right. I mean, there's still a few little bugs in it here and there, but generally, you know, it feels feels pretty solid. We've got a decent particle system in now. Um, we've got the movement. We've got the screen shake. We've got the kind of look and feel of it. Uh, we just need to work our way through um, the behaviors. So what I'm talking about now is doing the behaviors for these. Um, I, I guess you would call them mines. Um, which you can shoot, um, which at the moment we can't because I haven't assigned them a, a, a destroyable attribute. Um, but one thing that they do is when you get close enough to them, they they start flashing and they they explode. So each each screen is going to have varying numbers of these. Some are going to have none. Some are going to have lots and lots of them. So what I what I'm suggesting is in our screen behaviors, um, let me just find those. Maps here we go screens. So we've got these screen behaviors, and we can set these up per screen. Um, and some of this is going to be imported from the map editor. So so this stuff here is almost likely going to be imported from the map editor. This is the screen in question that we're looking at. It's got a lot of stuff here that is basically destroyable stuff. Um, persistence. This is going to also have these mines in it as well. They're not in there now, um, but they will have the mines in there eventually. I might add one in um, shortly just to demonstrate that we can still blow them up once we get them to um, to explode. Um, but every one of these routines has an initialization routine. Every one of these uh, screen kind of files has an initialization routine, an update, and an exit. So what I'm suggesting is we have uh, something new. So um, I don't know what, to, I need to think of a general term for them so I can put them all into one file. So I think I'm going to call it, um, uh, thank you for the host, Shrapnel21. Welcome. Uh, oh, I, I said hello to you anyway when you came in here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, or I think I did. Oh, no, you came in with, uh, you probably came in with Dom, I guess. But um, yeah, welcome anyway, dude. Thank you for the host. Uh, so let's find out how to use LDA then. <laughs> Hope you're doing well tonight. Yes, I'm doing well. Thank you, sir. I'm quite tired. This this week's been uh this week's been difficult because I've been starting the new job. I've had to kind of get back to getting up early and kind of being awake all day. Whereas on my I know I only had four weeks off, but um I I spent most of the time just kind of sleeping or napping in the afternoon uh, and being drunk. Um, and now I can't do that, so I'm I'm, find, I'm finding getting through a eight eight nine hour day um, and being kind of conscious and awake is is quite difficult. So, 
Uh, but we're getting there. The good thing is, is by the end of the day, I'm so tired that once I've done a stream or done whatever, I feel really tired and I sleep well. So, <laughs> Drukan beer cheered. <laughs> uh, thanks for the bit, Sandy. Appreciate it, dude. All goes towards the. Uh, I haven't actually put my wine thing on tonight, so if you if you do wine, it will say wine. But I'm actually drinking cider. I've got my wine ready for the weekend, man. Did an order today. So what I'm what I'm going to suggest is in here we have something along the lines of um, I don't know what to call these these these. In fact, I'm going to call them entities. Um, which is actually I'm going to call it N. Entity, like that. There you go. Um, and the reason I'm going to call it that is because they. This is a this is a term that you um you see quite often in um. Well, certainly saw them in older first person shooter engines like Quake and Doom and stuff like that. They had they had what were called entity engines, and basically an entity is any object that has a unique behavior, um, uh, and can be placed in a position in the map. And every entity shares a few kind of um a few properties that are the same um across across screens across maps across the entities themselves uh good night shrapnel 21 thanks for thanks for the uh, follow dude uh for the host sorry um so in this case an entity is going to be anything that is um more than just uh, an explodable object so um for instance these things down there uh not entities these up here, not entities, these here, not entities, but these would be entities because they do a little more than just explode. So, um, and there's a bug there I can't get out. So, um, so what I'm thinking is, um, in, in the, in a screen like this, what we can do is we can register certain entities. So we can say, okay, this screen has mines. So register mines. And what that's going to do is as soon as the screen is loaded, it's going to run a piece of code which is going to look through the screen uh, and it's going to find all the mines on the screen and it's going to create a list of them so that we can then use them. Um, and then, then in the update, we can have... Update mines. Like so. And then in here... He register mines. Um, so I was going to I was going to use illegal opcodes for this, but I realised that I probably don't even need to do that. But if 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 I want to make this happen in a very specific place, then what I could do is I could take these out of here, um, just keep that register and deregister in here, and then in the main game loop in here. Um, I can have something like this. So I could say, okay, we're just going to call a list of entities here. We're going to say update this one. Uh, and then there might be update um, four way mines, update eight way mines, right? Because there are three of the three of the items. Four way mine is just something that fires spikes out in four directions, and eight way mine is one that fires out in eight directions. Actually, I think they're six way, not four way. Um, hey, cheers, we're good. Welcome to welcome to the stream, dude. Um, but obviously this, as I was saying, this would be inefficient when these mines might not exist, hence the register mines. And what we can do is we can replace this here, this jump to subroutine with something different. So what I can do instead, is if I did word and then a byte here, I did one C. Now what that's doing is it's creating a knot. 1c is a not instruction but it's a not uh, absolute mode instruction not a not um like we're used to seeing with 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 just one uh one byte used it's a three byte not and what it does is it it basically it behaves like a not um but it also takes an address so it takes an address and it does nothing um but what it means is we can we can run this code now and it will skip over all of these things it, it will they still need to exist. These update routines need to exist, but they'll never be jumped into. It will just skip over this block, go straight down to here, and this takes four cycles to run. And then in the register mines, we could change this. 
we could change this from byte one C to byte two zero. And then they, instead of being a knob, it would become a jump to subroutine. And then that way we could turn on the updates very easily for, for each, each um, thing. However, thinking about it, I think it might be worth trying it in the update first, because it's only going to be one quick call. Um, my only concern is that it is something we would have to repeat on almost every screen. Um, I mean, likewise, we'd have to do this on, a, on almost every screen, but, um, and actually register minds, it might be register objects. So maybe, maybe this is all, maybe this is all kind of wrong anyway. Um, who got that one? Mr. G, well done. So let, let's go with a simple approach first. Let's do it all in the screen data. Um, if it turns out that we're using far too much uh, memory in the in the screen area, then we can move to a system like this. Um, it would be good to avoid illegal opcodes, obviously, um, uh, because they're not going to be supported on uh, on every system. So, for instance, say if I wanted to port this uh, to Mega sixty five, it may not work um, because. While it while it would work in C sixty four mode, it wouldn't work in C sixty five mode or um, or such. So I'm not going to put it. I'm going to leave it in there as a as a commented out piece of code because I think it could be useful to take a look at uh, at some point if we do decide to move it. Um, but for now, I'm going to do it in here. So actually, what I'm thinking is this should be register entities and this should be deregister entities then that way this is i don't know because you may not want to check on every screen well you can if you do need to check for things on screen so for instance on the first screen let me just create an entity file and, and put this in So what have we got? We've got um, register entities. Oops, there we go. Deregister entities, then update mines. So the reason I just have a, a global register entity is because I can scan through the entire the entire screen and just pick out the types as we go through um, and just keep a kind of catalog of the, 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 the character numbers that apply to the types here. Um, obviously, we need, we're going to need to adjust these character numbers soon. So anybody who saw a Thalamus' stream earlier today, he's, he's getting very close to, to having the map ready for me. Um, and it's only really when we, when we implement his map work into the game that we'll know the exact characters that we need. Um, the good thing about about doing this all in one go as well is we can just do it in one pass of the screen. So we can just scan through the screen, screen once for things and not have to scan for each type. Um, also, we don't have to scan every character. We only have to scan uh, the top left character of every 2x2 two two block because everything's done in 2x2 two two tiles, more or less. There's a few places where it's not quite that. But for the most part, they'll be in 2x2 two two tiles. And so we can just check a quarter of the screen characters basically to do this. So that's how we're gonna. That's how I'm gonna go about doing this. Um, so if we keep this, so we you could you could argue that we could do this at the beginning of every single screen, uh, and then that removes the need to have it in the init function. But well, and this is what I wanted to show you. Some screens don't have any entities. Um, isn't that loaded? Oh, I need to actually import it, don't I? In loader, so let's do it here. So in Quake, entities were things like rockets, or uh, I think even the players were considered to be entities, or kind of, they they were kind of they inherited properties from entities. But um, things like power ups were entities, um, enemies were entities. Um, it, it, you know a anything in the game that, that was uh, placed within the map was was an entity uh, and uh, I'm kind of tr 
treating the kind of the, the the definition of that a little bit more loosely in in here so um you could argue that these items on the first screen um these things here would be entities but they have a very a very common functionality all they all they really do is explode um and and leave you some points or in this case a power up beyond that they don't have any more um any more abilities so so really we're, what we're doing is we're taking the top level of abstraction away uh we're abstracting the top level of abstraction if you like uh, and we're just saying that that's just the default. That's the default for an explodable object. But explodable objects can also have entity behaviors as well, which is what we're going to call an entity. So in, in the case of these, um, they would have an entity behavior. Um, so what we're going to do now is we'll, we'll work out um, what data we need to store for the entity. Uh, and we'll do a scan through the screen to find this, and we'll set up that class to actually to build those uh, that entity list as we need it. Um, so the easiest way to do this is going to be to have a single list of entities that are on the screen. So we'll we'll just call uh, we'll just call it data because that's the the kind of convention that I've used throughout. Um, but what this will have is it will have a full list of everything on the screen. So um, what we need. Uh, the absolute minimum I can think of at the moment that we need is um, uh, a screen location. So uh, we'll do screen LSB, screen MSB, uh, and there needs to be a maximum number as well because we need to make sure that this um, this this is a kind of predictable list. If we if we make these kind of expandable to any number of values then we're going to run into trouble where we're not going to know where screen msb is without working out how many we've got at the moment and it's just going to confuse the things a little bit um, so it's another good reason to to not include things like this because there's lots of these explodable things in the screen and if we start including them in entities then that's a whole a whole uh, extra kind of amount of entity space that we're going to need so um by just putting the stuff that's kind of a bit more active in then we're going to reduce that number down quite a bit um it also means we can adjust that number as we go along so on this screen there are nine potential entities here so i'm going to set a maximum of 16 for now uh, and we can change that at some point if we need to so in the entities in the uh, constants file um This is tubular bells. Yeah. I used to love this. I had this on vinyl. Um, and it's like super long as well. It's like a 20 minute long tune or something. It might even be longer, actually. Uh, good night, Dom. Thanks for the raid, dude. Uh, sleep well, dude. And I shall check out, um, I shall check out, uh, Wonderboy at some point. Oops. Okay, so all this is going to have is just a maximum number of entities and they're all going to be set to zero in here. Um, okay, so that gives us a screen location, but it doesn't tell us what it is, so we need to know a type as well. So we'll put type in here, uh, and we'll use type as our, our baseline in here. So if... Um, if type is not a baseline, as our kind of indicator of whether it's active or not. So if the type is zero, it means don't do anything. We've reached the end of the list. Um, and what we'll, what we'll do is when we register entities, we'll just add them to this list uh, and we'll leave the last space as zero here. Um, and then when we go to update things, we can go through the list. Um, in fact, it would probably just be update entities here rather than mines. Or we could just set it to only update mines. Or mm, I'll have a think about that. Because it may be that we want to stagger the updates as well. We might say, okay, let's stagger the uh, the distance checks and just do mines on, on one frame. And on the next frame, do do uh, something else. So this is my beagle. So an entity is something you can interact with other than by shooting or crashing into it. Yeah, so it's going to be something that has more than just the basic behavior. So in Checkanoid, that's going to be um, 
mostly it's going to be enemies that uh, are built into the map. So there are some enemies that are going to be sprites, quite a lot of them actually. Um, but there are going to be some enemies that aren't um, aren't sprites and are just going to be part of the... Uh, let me just get into here. This is the video I keep going back to all the time. Oh, piss off. Honestly, I was, I don't know if anybody saw his um, RTX 3090 review today, but it really annoyed me. The fact that he he did a, an 8K video, him and Marcus Brownlee or whatever his, I can never remember his name, Marcus Brownlee, did 8K um, 3090 videos. They were, they, they were almost 100% definitely adverts, sponsored adverts by NVIDIA. Um, and they were both kind of going, oh, my God, yes, yes, this is amazing, this is amazing. And although Marcus seemed a little bit more kind of um, pragmatic about it and a bit more focused on what, what was good and what was bad. Um, but then when it, came to, when it came to actually reviewing it, he just kind of went against the stuff he was saying, and it kind of pissed me off a little bit um, to just kind of mislead people like that. Whereas I think the, the Gamers Nexus one was pretty good. Anyway. It didn't stop me, but I bought one. I ended up buying one today, so. Anyway. Um, so, yeah, an entity would be um, these things here, because you see they flash. They, they've got an interaction with the player beyond just them being shot. Um, these are just going to be sprites, so that's, that's going to be different. Um, so, for instance, on this screen here, these would be these, so these three would be entities as well. See how these are just like mines, but with some some spikes that shoot off. These would be entities as well. So these these uh, turrets here, these are going to behave as entities as well, which just means that when the screen is scanned, it's just going to find um, find these things on the screen, and then it's going to apply some uh, some updates to them same way we've got the screen updates there will be specific updates that just update this particular object here um kind of like how we have enemy update behaviors um these could be entities as well so you see uh, even though they're not uh, they're not doing any interaction with the player they do have an animation so we could treat them as a, an animation animation entity uh, so it would scan the screen for those and it go okay these four things um need to be updated each frame Hey Fitrend, uh, new to Twitch, but long time local Shallon 50k's YouTube channel. Decided to finally join Twitch to watch Shallon live. Appreciate all the streams there. Oh, cool! Thank you. Um, good to uh, good to, good to see you and welcome welcome to a live stream. Again, these would be entities as well. So these things on the side, uh, they're imported as part of the map, but they do have a, a behavior. They fire out little bullets like this. Um, so they'd be entities. These are going to be sprites, so they won't be. Um, and so on and so on. It's just it's by by separating it out like that, it means we can kind of make the decision on a screen by screen basis how we want to do this. Uh, do the entities interact with each other independent of player interaction? I one mind triggers another. Um, I don't think they do. No, I would have to double check that though. But I'm pretty sure they don't. Um, because there are places like this where you can you can trigger one. Um, and it doesn't set the other ones off. But I need to double check that because it may be just that the spikes that come off these. Um, uh, but it, it, things like here, the timing on this as well is, is going to be important. So we need to be able to, once we've initialized the, the entities on a screen, we also need to be able to go in and change some properties about them as well. So that's going to be important. These lasers potentially could be entities as well. Um, I'm not sure yet, but I, I think it's uh, I think it's a good way to to handle this and allows us to uh, allows us to kind of a, a lot of flexibility when we do these things as well. Um, yeah, eight K cool, awesome. Watching on ten eighty p. Yeah. I, I did find I did find the 8K videos a little bit kind of I mean it was obvious that they were it was obvious that they were Nvidia adverts but it's just the way that they were presented I think I think Marcus kind of presented it much much like I've been told by Nvidia to to do this and he he presented 
you know, uh, frame counters and stuff. You could you could see he was he was. Yes, he was doing an advert for them, but he was also being honest and not not trying to overhype things. Whereas Linus was overhyping something that he'd he'd reviewed himself the day before, I'm sure, ready to upload that video to YouTube, and and um, just was very contradictory with with his um, with his uh, well shilling, as as Andy puts it, his shilling. So I found it a bit annoying. Um, but you know, I don't expect any less from him now. I've kind of got used to it. I don't take his word for for tech stuff anyway. Uh, but as I say, it didn't stop me buying one uh, because I'm I'm not buying it insanely. Uh, I'm, I'm not buying it um, solely for um, gaming. Um, but I am buying it for. Um, well, I am buying it for gaming, but I'm also buying it for the other stuff it can do as well. So. It will be a workstation card primarily and a gaming card second. It's just going to be a good gaming card, that's all. Um, but yeah, I ordered that today. I was surprised. I beat all the bots. There were 400 people in queue for the card that I went for. Um, and I still managed to beat them to it. So, uh, Right, okay. So let's do a scan through the screen. So the uh, register entities first. So we're, we're going to need a few types up here. So. Um, I could put these in constants here, but they kind of belong in here because these are going to be the the uh, the enemy types, so the entity types. So I'm going to put type mine or basic mine, we can call it. Um, and these are just going to have numerical values that go up. So I'll put a couple in. Um, I'll call this one four-way mine, and the other one is a six-way mine. I know it looks like an eight-way mine, but it actually only fires six barbs out six spikes out we'll add more to this as we go along so we can have up to 256 different well 255 because zero means there are none so um other stuff warm was just, <laughs> yeah but do you know what it's actually quite cold in here for once this is the coldest it's been in this room for a while yeah look 18.6 that's that's a miracle for this room um so maybe i've got it maybe it's the right time <laughs> for it um, so we're going to need uh, next index here, which is going to be zero. So and this is just going to make sure that when we add something to this array, it gets added in the right place. Oh, Hayes comes out of nowhere to get that one. Well done, Hayes. <laughs> just beating Dr. Goggles to the post. Welcome, Hayes. Never played Delta, seriously. Wow. You should. It's a good game. It is a very, very good game. And it's got the it's got the mixy load on it, which is cool. The Hubbard Mixy Load. Okay. Um so the other thing we're gonna need for this is we're gonna need to know the character numbers uh for these things. So we're just gonna check the top left corner. Uh but obviously, this is going to be uh, different when I get the new character set. So I don't want to hard code it somewhere in here. I'm going to create a constant up here for these things. Um, in fact, what I'll probably do is create um, an array of things in here to check through. See, it's just constantly trying to. I've got to. I've got to like block him or something because it's just constantly trying to throw them at me. Um, that's OBS, don't want OBS. What do I want? I want a uh, char pad. That's what I want. Oh, God's sake. Okay, so Technoid Assets Source, this one. So, obviously, the colors are all wrong because of the way I've, I've set things up here, but this, that's absolutely fine. Um, what I do want to do though, is I want to find these objects, uh, which I think is that one there. Let me just color it, make sure. Yeah, it is. Okay. And that character number is ED. Now, the problem with this is when the, when the game, hmm, actually, this is going to be a pain. This is going to be a pain because the problem we've got now is that I need these things to explode, right? 
Um, now, when these when this screen loads in, this could be loaded in an ED. It could be loaded in somewhere else. So either I have to make the corners of these objects base characters and move them up here, or what I have to do is I have to use a different material number for these. But they really should have the material numbers that match these here, uh, so that when they're loaded in, it knows to it that they, they when they explode, which way the particles go. So, uh, good night, sir. Full time to head home. Oh yeah, you're in uh, you're in North America, Canada, somewhere, aren't you? Um, hmm. I wonder how many hours I actually played Samantha Fox Street Poker. Well, it's in the list of uh, it's it's in the list of games on the screenshots. I found a I found a safe for stream screenshot of it, so it is in there. That's the thing. Not none of you are going to recognize it when it comes up because you're like, I don't I don't recognize this game. Do you need them to be characters at first or for later screens? Um, no, I don't. They. I'm, I'm trying to make as many things as possible characters in this. And the reason for that is there are some screens where you've got lots of these things on the screen, but then you've also got sprites that are definitely moving around. So um, I have to, I have to try and keep as many of them characters as possible. The fact that they don't move makes it easy to, to use them as characters and not as sprites. Uh, do you need the, uh, oh, sorry, are you using color attributes? No. Um, so I'm using them in here just for visualization. Uh, but what I'm using is the materials, so the upper upper part of that. Um, but I'm actually merging that in from um, the the character script. So when it when it imports these characters, they're imported as sixteen uh, bit values um, because there's more than two hundred fifty six of them. There's currently six hundred seventeen. Although I think Andy said he'd got it down to five hundred ten uh, at the last check. So that's pretty good. Um, but what that means is um, currently I need to I need ten bits to de to determine which character it is in here. So what I'm doing is I'm merging the the four bits of the materials into the upper four four bits of that sixteen bit block because the upper six bits are not being used. Um, so what I might have to do here is um, a combination of things here. So I, I may have to set the materials just like this but also use the the two bits the because actually there's three bits now because andy said he'd got it down to 510 which means i only need nine bits for the for the uh, for the character so let me just demonstrate what i mean there so um so every every map value every every um character in the map is defined as a 16-bit value. Uh, no, yeah, no bitty at all. It's, it's, it's a bitty free picture of Samantha Fox, um, which is why I don't think anybody will get it because they'll be like, I don't, I don't understand this game. What is this game? Um, so for instance, um, if I wanted to uh, display this character down here somewhere, right? Let's, let's say uh, that one there. You see its value is 1DD. You can just about see it at the bottom. Um, so its value is that, which in binary is going to be uh, one, two, three, one. So this is two bytes in memory, uh, and then DD, which would be uh, one, zero, one, 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 zero, one, something like that. So this is what it looks like in memory. Uh, and our map is never going to go above uh, one FF. I think it actually goes up to one FE. Currently, it goes up to two something or other, but the, the final results that I've got from Andy is that it's going to remain under 510. So that means we've got all of these bits here that are free. So what I'm currently doing, let me just split this into two bits. So you can see now you've got, this is, a, this is one byte, and this is the other byte. And so we're using these nine bits here to, to generate our, um, so let me keep that together. We're using these nine bits um, here to generate the, the character from the map uh, and copy that into the font at the right place. But then what I'm doing is part of the map export is actually putting the material in here as well. So let me put M's in there. So those four values here become um, these materials here. 
but you can see I've still got three left here. So what I could do is I could use these three to define which of the which types are. That means I would have eight different eight different types that could be put in there. Well, seven actually, because zero would mean it's none of these. So that would give me yeah three three lip boosts there for up to eight entity types. Yeah. So I, well, it would be seven because you'd need zero to say it's not an entity. So actually, that would that would put all the all the responsibility on the map exporter to to generate those uh, those values. So I think that's how I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to go I'm going to go with that method. Um, now, what that means though is it's not going to be as straightforward as just reading um, the screen value um, here. What we're going to have to read is we're going to have to read the upper byte. So what happens when we copy the screen is um, the lower byte from this this value here. So this is how the screen copy works. So it writes this into. Let me put these back to. I'll put the ones so you can see. So it writes this value here to seven eight hundred onwards. So this is like a shadow screen ramp that it writes this value to. And then it writes this value to 7C100. And then what it does is it looks up um, it looks up this character that it's it's being asked to do and says, is this already being drawn? Uh, has this already been drawn on this screen? If it has, then it just grabs the character number that it, it needs to grab and it changes this value to it. So this may actually point to that. And then it's done. And then it moves on to the next one. If it hasn't already been drawn, then it draws it into the font and sets this accordingly but the key point is that this value here changes what doesn't change though is this upper value here um, this value ends up getting copied into screen ram and that's how we see the thing scroll across this is what gets scrolled into the screen this value just sits around doing nothing but what this what this is being used for is it's been used for the explosions it works out exactly which way um, you know, but using this material, it knows exactly how to explode things in different directions. Um, so we persist this data for each screen. That means instead of looking for the screen, uh, the, the screen lookup um, directly on the screen, we're going to look at this location instead. So we're going to advance to this location four bytes at a time. Uh, sorry, one, one out of four, four bytes. So one, one for each tile, basically. Um, and we're going to check this value for these three bits here not this bit because this bit it belongs to this piece here but for these three bits here and that should give us hopefully um whether or not it's a it's a mine or not so we are going to have to add that um data in somehow um i'm not sure how i'm going to do that i can probably add something quickly to the uh to the map exporter um yeah i'm gonna have to i guess but that's how we work out what type it is um, so I'm sorry that was a long explanation, but I hope that kind of cleared things up about what I'm thinking about this. Uh, because what I'm trying to do is make this routine as efficient as possible and not kind of waste memory. We've already got quite a lot of memory being used by the map routines, and I don't want to add more to those. I want to make, I want to keep that as small as possible. No, can you explain it again? No, you can, you can rewind the video. <laughs> oh, no, you're pulling my leg. It's fine. Okay, so that means the first job is I just need to go and check the map loader. I just need to make sure that that map loader is not um, not getting rid of some of those bytes, which it may be doing, because uh, I do seem to remember uh, doing an and F0 somewhere um, just to get that those top four bits, and it might be in here where I'm doing it. So just need to have a quick look. Uh, so this is where we load the map and you can see we've got uh, LSB store is the is the target for uh, sorry no MSB oh it's the other way around yeah 7c that's right that's that's the one we're looking for the MSB store okay and we are indeed doing and f0 here so we need to make a quick change here to make sure that that um, doesn't break things so that's going to be a case of removing it from here and then whenever we load that value in again which is a i, I did this the other way around the other day so now I'm, I'm kind of flipping it on its head again 
um, just making sure that those values it's not this one is it uh hang on let me think about this so this is oh this is just adding the explosions it's not that one it is Particles destroyable. I think it's this one. Find shadow screen RAM lookup. Tables map lookup. Okay, let's have a look at the tables. Okay, that's the shadow screen. It's not that one we need though. It's the 7C value that we need. Um, additional info. Persistence lookup. Here we go. Oh no, persistence lookup is. No, let me check where persistence lookup is. Oh no, pers persistence lookup is in this lot here, um, which is the X and Y on the screen, the hit points, and what what type of object it is. It's not that one. Somewhere there is going to be like a remove. Is it remove object persistence remove exit and remove add explosion at char coordinates oh maybe it is in explosions then okay let's go and have a look at explosions and What's it getting that type from? That's what I'm. So what I'm looking for in here, and it's a shame because I, I had it this way round, um, and unfortunately I've I've changed it now. To I I had changed it to put the um. To put the and in here, instead, and I probably shouldn't have done that. I should have left it. But then again, I didn't think I was going to use these other values, but it kind of makes sense to use them now. So. Uh, so actually none of that needs to happen because you see what it's doing here it's loading this value in and in it and storing it and we, we don't want that at all um, so actually I can get rid of rid of that bit there completely but what I do need to find is where that's being read um, I think it's being read in here somewhere but I'm, I'm not entirely sure where so let's Let's work through this, okay. So this looks like it's working out the screen location. Um, data comma X. So oh, no, this is turning it into sprite data, which is is not what we want. That's the explosion. It's not the explosion we need, it's the particles that we need. So that is just to go back to destroyable again. Somewhere in here, we're going to create particles. Hit piece, add particle. Here we go. Screen point, next particle. Where's my screen point? Zero. Yeah, where's screen point? What's that actually been? What am I missing on? Nothing. Okay. Oops. Vision type look at one to six. Oh, it's this here, isn't it? Hit piece. Yeah, it's 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 reducing it. LSR. Okay. So actually this will still work. This will still work the same. Because we're shifting to the right, so the the upper four bits are still going to be the upper four bits. So this this should all just work fine. So uh, let's let's test that theory. Uh, we've removed that code from the map loader now. This should still work exactly the same. Hopefully. <laughs> Ghostbus, who got that one? Docs to me. Well done. I'm gonna go for a break in a minute. I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait for this race to finish, and then I'll start the break. I'm scared to. I'm scared to press the break button while there's a race active. So. Yeah, see, it's still working perfectly fine. Okay, that's cool. Uh, 
cool. All right. So that means in uh, in here, we can now register entities by scanning through the screen uh, in this in the in the upper area of the screen. Sorry, in the MSB kind of store, the attribute store, if you like. Um, we can look through that and we can grab um, exactly which entity type it is, and we can still retain the um, the explosion attributes as well. So you can have something which explodes out in every direction, but it's also of a particular entity type. So it's going to make that a lot easier. <laughs> right. Okay. Right. Let me restart the races and go for a break, and then we'll we'll do that. I'm going to have to probably make a small change to the. Um, uh, to the editor just to allow it to actually export that entity value just as a temporary measure for now. Um, and then I'll do it properly when, when I get the proper map details uh, from Andy. He's, he's, I think he's, he's got the character set trimmed down now. The only thing he's got left to do really now is just to shrink every screen down to that 4-3 aspect ratio instead of 16-9, which I actually think is the hardest task out of them all. So um, I don't envy that envy his work though that's not going to be an easy thing to do all right i'll be back in uh it's easy <laughs> no, he's here <laughs> i don't envy you. i don't think that's easy i honestly don't think that's easy but if you say it's easy that's fine that's fine i'm not a, i'm not a map editor guy so i wouldn't know okay i'm going to take a quick break guys uh, so good luck with the quiz and i'll be back in uh, five minutes be right back That was a quick one anyway. I yeah, I I must have pressed it twice. I must have pressed stop straight away. So I'll I'll let it do a couple of runs. No idea what that is. Oh yes I do. Okay, right, so I'm gonna make a quick edit now to the JavaScript. So I apologize for messy JavaScript, but Oh, Mr. G. Oh, Mr. G. I, I, I don't want to say anything. Okay. Yes. <laughs> well done, Vortex. That's really unfortunate, Mr. G. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's really unfortunate. Okay, let me uh, open up. Uh, God, which one is it now? Oh, it's in here, actually. I can just do it in here. All right. So I need to know which character I'm looking at. So I'm looking at this one here. So character 237. So this is a very temporary hack into here at the moment, but the attributes do get added in somewhere. Um, screen files. Okay, so this is where the attributes get created. This is just using the materials at the moment. Um, but what I want to do is add some extra information to these. So what I want to do is... Um, actually, I can use the color data to do this, but I'm not going to use the color data because it's just going to get messy. So um, I'm, I'm literally just going to put an if statement in here. So if i is 237, uh, then attribute attribute plus uh it would be actually attribute attribute or let's add let's use uh logical operators here uh and this would be a binary number two and that should add it that's that's basically all we need to add that value in um i just need to make sure that that value gets added properly down here so there's going to be another instance of that somewhere Screen MSB is a screen value plus this lower value as well. Um, here's some Fox Bitty emotion. Who got that right? Aquafin. Yeah. I, I liked that game a lot. I thought it was a pretty cool game. It was difficult, but it was good. 
Um, okay, I'm going to change the attribute because at the moment we've got 617 characters, so I can't use that uh, that uh, uh, bit turn. I need to I need to move across one, so I'm going to use this one here uh, just for now. Uh, this will have to be changed at some point. Uh, in fact, I'm going to put a little note here: uh, temporary entity. Oops. This will this will have to be changed. But what that means now, um, and I am going to have to change this ever so slightly. So uh, I'm going to make basic mine entity two for now. This is very doing at the same time. Uh, and some stuff is going to flag up as a four way mine, uh, but we're not going to be doing anything with those at the moment. Um, once I get the real values, uh, the real uh, character set, then I'll be able to make this a bit more accurate. Okay, so we need to scroll through the screen. So we're going to use uh, through this shadow area of screen, I should I say. So what I'm going to use is. Um, Uh, let's have a look. Not constants, zero page. Have we got a zero page thing that we can use in here? So we've got temporary values up here, so it's probably a good idea to use some of these. Um, map lookup, that looks good. Let's use that one. It's part of the map loader, and it's going to happen after the map loader. So I'll just stop the break now as well. I was, I was, I was waiting for that. I thought someone was going to get that a lot quicker than that. Another great game. Oh wow! <laughs> it's naysayer. Hey. Thank you very much for the raid, naysayer. That's one hell of a raid. <laughs> Welcome along, guys. Um, what have you been coding tonight, Naysayer? I did a pop very briefly onto your channel before I started, actually. Um, but I, I didn't. I, I didn't have. To, I was. It was so close to my uh, my own um, stream. I wasn't really ready to. Uh, uh, didn't have enough time to kind of see what you were up to. But um, yeah, welcome along. Welcome everyone that's come along with Naysayer. So I'm Shalan Fifty K. I do C sixty four coding mostly. Uh, I have been doing some Game Boy stuff as well on Tuesdays, uh, but tonight we're doing Checkanoid, which is a it's a game that came out on PC last year. Um, it was released on iOS and Android uh, shortly after, and it's just come out on Switch as well. Um, thank you for the followers, guys. Uh, Bier, uh Samuel, Samuel Deboni, uh, Jocko W. Thank you for the followers, guys. And dev four five two k as well. So let me just show you what what we're doing, so you can get an idea. Uh, so th this is the game we're trying to recreate. Um, that's. Hang on, let me go into here. Uh, thank you, uh, long boolean, long boolean. I like that. Uh, Loud void, uh, Alfina gamer as well. Thank you for the follows, guys. So this is the, uh, I think this is the Steam version uh, that came out towards the end of last year. Um, it's a, it's a kind of spectrum, sp spectrum kind of inspired, checkanoid inspired, uh, uh, not checkanoid, sorry, cybernoid inspired clone. Uh, thank you for the follow, Necronos and Rody Jim as well. Can we follow at the same time? <laughs> yes, you can. You can follow whenever you want to follow. It's absolutely fine, and I will do my best to read everybody's names out. But there's quite a lot of follows. Uh, so Saint 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 St T Zero Saint Sto, uh, thank you for the follow, dude. So yeah, this is what we're trying to recreate. This is uh, this is the uh, Steam version. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of stuff going on. It. Some of it's going to be difficult to do on the C64, but we're, we're getting there. It's early days, but we're getting there. So this is, uh, this is what it looks like on, uh, on Steam and actually on all the other uh, systems as well. And this is the version that we've got so far. Oh, you keep getting <laughs> the lion. Yes. It's not the lion. It's me. I'm, I'm the lion. One of my uh, viewers clicked me roaring at the code, so 
do I archive my streams? I do. So all my streams are available on YouTube. Um, the, return, the roar is majestic. Yes, thank you. I am majestic. Uh, you can find my YouTube there. Uh, and everything I've done for the past 18 months is on there. Um, the only streams that aren't on um, YouTube directly are these Checkanoid streams. Uh, they will be on the VODs on Twitch for about a week. Uh, and then they become patron-only streams. So if you do want to um, download those, you can join the patron or... Um, you can join the patron or you can uh, subscribe to Twitch and you'll get access to those those videos as well. Uh, thanks, Clan Killer. Thanks for thanks for joining. Yeah, so this is what we've got so far. It's like I say it's early days, but we're we're getting there. We've got a particle system. We've got uh, screen shake. We've got you know twin stick controls. Um, just working our way through through the behaviors now basically i need to fix my mane yeah i should wear like a a fluffy scarf shouldn't i and redo the redo the, the thing as well uh thanks for the follow josh steger as well okay um let's so what we're trying to do at the moment is we're just trying to make these mines active so that the, the, the moment they they don't do anything they're, they're oh they do something Oh, I know why they do something as well. They're now actually pulling in some values. Okay, so we need to need to figure out what that's what's that actually call calling. Or point of VHS camcorder at the screen and pirate the vault. Yeah, you could do that as well. I actually I I don't mind how people view the vods. I just wanted to give the patrons something a little bit extra that they could uh they could hold on to as a as a benefit so okay so at the moment if i try and shoot these they do explode after a while it's not doing that that one did though oh okay i have to hit the top corner so if i hit the top corner it does add this extra attribute so i could do with figuring out if that attribute is causing problems here or not I, I, well i mean it obviously is causing problems uh, and that will be to do with this new value that we've added into that's that's the chat but it's not that one uh, the the new value here that i've added um if i turn that off i'm imagining that's going to stop that from happening so let's take a look Yeah, the Russian bot invasion was the record, definitely. That was crazy. I mean, you think the follow is annoying um, when when ten people follow. When um, when the Russian bots invaded, it we, we it was just constant. <laughs> yeah, see, it's not it's not breaking now. And that is because, actually, no, it's not because of that. Let's let's think. When we shoot something, what happens? So we need to check actually in the in the shoot code. So uh, in the bullets code, which is this one here, we're probably also doing that lookup um, to see if it's non-zero or not. So let's just go and have a look. So uh, cannot spawn bullet in the scenery. So somewhere in here, bullets hit something. Destroyable remove item. Okay, so it's going to be in the destroyable code. And this is going to load. Uh, da, da, da. If it's not equal to zero, jump to continue. Ah, okay. So this is the check that we're doing here. So what this is doing is it, it's checking to see has the value got any of those, um, those upper values set, those upper four bits. So the and F zero we can just put in here. So we put that in there. And then go back and restore this code here, the temporary code. That should solve that issue and it shouldn't try and explode those things. What it was doing is it was seeing that actually that attribute value had something in it. Um, 
and and it was causing it to explode. So this should prevent that, hopefully. So. Um. Uh, there's a bit of C earlier, in this. so if, yeah, if ASM macro is probably this. There's no C in this, it's all ASM. But I'm using Kick Assembler as as uh, as Andy says, it's got some uh, it's got some nice kind of macros in that let you do things like, like pre 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 kind of assemble things that um allow you to use kind of C style syntax for stuff. Okay, so this should prevent it from, yeah, there it goes, fine. So it was just, the, the attributes weren't being masked, so we were still seeing those bottom attributes. So these are fine now. So what we can do is we can start implementing our, um, I'm not destroyable, let's close some of these down, don't need all of these. Keep that one open, because that might be useful. Uh, keep everything else open, all right. So we need to register the entity. So the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to set up our, our lookup. Uh, so we're going to store this at, I don't know why that's lowercase in, but well, it's fine. I'd like to put the plus zero, so I want to know that it's a two byte thing or two or more byte thing. And we're going to start looking from this position. Now, we do need to create um, two loops here. So we need a, a, a column loop. And we need a row loop as well. Uh, then at the same time, we need to count the columns as we go through as well. So I'm going to use uh, these global temps here to do this. Uh, so I'm going to use gtemp1. Uh, I'm going to create some aliases for them up here. So um, I'm going to call this, uh, well, column. And we're going to do gtemp2 is going to be row. Uh, and so column loop is going to repeat so we need to set the row first here so we're going to we're going to count however many rows now we're going to do uh we're, we're doing tiles even though the game isn't drawn even though the game isn't loaded in in tiles it's actually tile based so we can see that uh, every object on the screen fits within a two by two grid so it should be pretty easy to um uh, to count that as 12 rows. So we're going to put 12 in here, and this is going to be our row counter here. So we're going to store that in row. Then when we start a column, obviously we need to do uh, 40 characters across 20 columns. So we're going to put one four in here and store that in column. Okay, now we can we can do stuff here, which is, um, actually that should be row loop and column. I've got those the wrong way around. So now we go through the columns. So We've got, an, uh, we've got a memory address uh, already in map lookup, so we're going to start Y here at zero, and we're going to load map lookup, comma Y. Now, that's going to give us the value um, that, I, that I specified before, where we're going to have the attribute in the top four bytes, four bits, and in the bottom four bits, we're going to have the entity value. Um, I'm not going to change the entity routine, um, the entity masking routine here. I'm just going to, for now, I'm just going to use this here. It does mean that four-way mines will be detected, even though they don't truly exist. Um, but it shouldn't really affect us, at least not for this this testing. Now we can we can implement um, it properly when uh, well we won't need to implement it properly, but it will automatically implement properly when um, the proper characters are passed in. So let's. Let's and that value now. So we, uh, sorry, yeah, and that's correct. So we're interested in those three bits there. And that's it. That's the only th only three bits we're interested in. Uh, and then we're going to shift that to the right by one. So it's going to convert it from being a value that ranges from two to uh, fifteen to a value that ranges from zero to seven. And so that gives us this entity here. Uh, and so now we can load X with next index. And we can store the accumulator at type, data.type, comma X. 
So now we've stored our type. Now we need to get the screen LSP and screen MSB. Now we could just copy the values directly from here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to copy the lower value from here. So I'm going to take that lookup for zero. I am going to store that in screen LSB. Like so. Uh, but for the top value, I'm just going to I'm just going to take the uh, bottom two bytes of uh, bottom two bits of this, so I get a value from zero to three, and that means that I can use this value as this is the offset from the start of the screen. So I can apply it to screen RAM, I can apply it to shadow screen RAM, I can apply it to um, uh, I can apply it to color RAM as well. Uh, skip of the value is zero. Yes, that's a good point. I will do that in a second. Hang on. Uh, yeah, so there'll be a skip here. So, uh, let's put that here. Okay. So let's just make sure we don't add anything if there is, is there. Uh, okay. So I'm going to end that value with, uh, it's just going to give me the, the value from zero to three. So we can then just add the start of color RAM. We can add the start of screen RAM. Uh, and these values will match properly on, on the screen then. And we're going to use this in a minute to, um, we're going to do an update mines routine and all that's going to do is just color those mines in red. Um, and that will show us that the, the routine is properly counting the, the, the entities. Um, okay, so the final thing we need to do here is we need to increment the X register and store that back at X index. Um, Actually, we can probably do this outside of here as well. So if I was to just do this up here instead. And then at the end, store it there. As long as I don't change X, then this will be fine. Um, as long as it doesn't go over 16. So I'm, in fact, just as a temporary measure while we're doing um well we have this character set and i'm going to put set to 32 if i set to 64 it doesn't matter i've got plenty of memory okay so that's added one item to the list so now we need to advance the columns so in order to advance columns it's going to be quite simple we're just going to increase y by two because we just need to move the, the y pointer along by two to point to the next top left corner of the next tile and then at the same time we need to decrease column and then if that's not equal to zero we can keep doing this loop so this is going to loop through the entire first column uh, first row uh, and detect if there's a one of these objects in each of those columns when that does reach zero we need to change things so the easiest way to do this is to just add to this value and we'll just reset again here so do that here we're going to take um actually skip needs to be here, like so, and we'll put exit here instead. Right, okay, so now we can decrease row, and if that is equal to zero, then we're going to exit. Otherwise, we need to increase map lookup. So we're going to take the value that's in map lookup here. I've just realized we need to add the y to this as well, so I'll do that in a minute. But, um, oh, that's a difficult one. I don't remember all the golf game names, that's the problem. It is golf of some kind, isn't it? Um, couldn't tell you what it is, though. <laughs> so we're going to load that map lookup. We're going to add um, 28 to it, which is 40 in hex. So that here, and then we need to do the same with map lookup plus one. I need to clear the code here, right. And then that can jump to row loop, which is going to start the whole process over again um, and just keep repeating this until we've done every single row. Now, this value here does need Y adding to it. So, um, so I think what I'll do here is I'll store Y at gtemp3. I'm not going to create an alias for it because I'm going to use it all in this one place here. Uh, then 
here carry a bit add g temp three and then here add zero and that should make sure that that y value gets added then to these and that should be enough that should give us that should count all of those entities on the screen at the moment it's the only entity that it's going to actually well actually it's going to pick up this one and it's going to pick up this one as well um this is two Oh, it might be too much actually let me think if i've got 617 then it could be two yeah so i said i'm going to change that to four i'll have to add some more more things in here i'm going to have to change this to eight there we go so one two yeah, because the first two bits could be used by this, so. Oh, no, 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 that's, that's, no, I was right. Okay, no, I was right. Let's just think, so the first bit, the first bit and the second bit are going to be used by the map currently. Yeah, okay, so this is fine. Let's just change that back to two, there we go. Cool. Uh, that's going to register the entities. So now uh, in update mines, all I'm going to do something really simple. Oh, well, we'll do the deregister entities first. So this is this is super easy. So load that with zero and I have a loop here. Uh, and all this needs to do is go through the list, grabbing data.type from the X. Uh, if that's equal to zero, uh, jump to exit. That means we're at the end of the list there. I say no, not necessarily, because we may remove things on the way. So, so actually, it probably is. We just need to clear everything regardless. So we do it like this, and we'll go backwards through the loop. So, there we go. Okay. That should deregister everything. That's just going to make sure that if we go onto the next screen, it's going to it's going to reset everything. And the other thing we also need to do here is store that at later dot next index just to make sure that that value gets reset as well. Oh, uh, crazy! All a friend of mine goes to sleep at the dentist. What? How? How could you do that? Uh, that's... I hate the dentist. I fear the dentist. There's no way I could sleep. I'd be too, too afraid. Oh, we're running out of, running out of alcohol. I might need to go and get another side. Well, I'll wait till the next break and I'll get side. You've almost fallen asleep. How? How would you do that? It's insane. I honestly don't know how you manage that. It's crazy to me. I'd just be too... I don't know. I, I need to know what's going on. And even then, I don't like what's going on. I certainly wouldn't want to fall asleep. Not that I think he's going to amputate my leg or anything while I'm asleep, but um, too nervous. It just wouldn't happen. Okay, update minds. So at this point now, we're going to do this same... Uh, same thing here. We're going to, do, um, in fact, I'm just going to copy this loop into here. Uh, but now what we're going to do is we're going to, instead of storing the value, we're going to grab the type. Oh, I've got two RTS in there. There we go. Put exit here. Put skip here. Okay. So if that type is zero, we don't need to do anything. We just jump straight to skip. Otherwise, we just, for now, we're just going to do a very temporary thing. So this is a temporary color uh, entity. Uh, and we're not even going to color the whole thing. We're just going to color that top corner for now. Um, so the way we're going to do this is we're going to load the accumulator with our, our values from here, from earlier. Uh, so screen, LSB, comma X, because we're going through the entire list. I'm going to store that at, uh, what is it, map lookup, I think I called. Yeah, map lookup. Uh, for zero. 
and this time we're going to grab the MSB and we're just going to add the color ram in. Now, there is something we do need to do here, which is the screen is offset by 28. So I could either change it, or in fact, I will change it up there to make this easier. So because the screen starts at zero, zero at the top, but the hood is at the top, the actual play area starts one row down. So we need to add 28 to these values. So when we do uh, this G temp thing here, uh, Actually, no, because that's going to make this a little awkward. Uh, but this is only going to this is only happening once on the frame, so this is this is fine to do. I think I don't really I don't really like this method, uh, but it's it should be okay. I think so. Uh, which means we don't need that clear there, but we do need to do that before we go any further. Okay, so we're storing the type, we're updating gtemp3 so that when we add it to here, it includes the extra line. Okay, cool. Um, so in here then, uh, that can remain the same and then here we just need to add our color ramp so this is c0 so uh, not c0 sorry d8 so our color ramp starts at d800 um, so by adding this we actually get a map lookup which points to uh, color ramp and then we should in theory just be able to set y to zero load accumulator with two store that at map lookup comma y and uh, that should be it hopefully all right let's give that a try so what i'm hoping to see here now is if we go into a screen that has these mines in it um why is that not loading so i'm just catching up on chat as well i'm intrigued to what you guys are talking about with the dentist uh i'm only ever two minutes away from a nap <laughs> uh they put you under for the stuff really uh, uh yeah i no, i just couldn't do that why risk the complications yeah exactly uh no complete clc before the ad uh oh you mean here uh yeah good point thank you uh although although we shouldn't need it because this is never going to overflow there's no other ad here there's no other comparison here so if i just do it up here save a bite save a bite and have two cycles as well thanks for the follow rex 757 welcome to the stream dude okay um right why didn't that compile there's something missing here oh uh data.next index okay so so that there we go Can i also do it wrong up here yeah So we're using update mines as our thing. I think we probably should have this separate update routines because otherwise what we have to do is we'd have to Oh no, because we could make a we could make a jump table based on the type. So actually this I'll call this update entities. It kind of keeps in the keeps in the same kind of uh, vein as everything else we've got going, so so let's call it up to entities there. Let's give that a try. So what I'm hoping to see is when we go in the screen with the mines on it, that the top left corner of the mine is painted red. And that would imply that A, it's identified that the mines are there, that the, the char pad export has worked correctly. Um, and I want to blow everything else up as well, just to make sure I've not broken anything. Also, I need to remove those explosions because those explosions aren't on everything. I'll just put them there for testing. Uh, okay, so the objects are there. They're not bugged out, but they're also not that they're also not um, detecting that they've hmm, that they've been updated. So uh, what we can do here then is we can take a look at this routine.
maybe it's not picking up the value correctly or maybe it's okay do you know what i'm going to do i'm going to store that in p020 let's see if it actually updates the, the border color at any point On any screen yeah I, I i will do that at some point so to be honest until i get the proper map i'm i'm, I'm kind of happy to do this because i need to test everything anyway just to make sure that changes i make don't break anything so uh but yeah i should probably set that up soon okay nothing has changed the border color at all so it's almost like that hasn't run so uh yeah let's let's start on that screen instead so in game loop here uh, let's see here so i change that to od that should hopefully start me on that screen and then i'm going to put a breakpoint into see i think that's working but i'm going to put a breakpoint here because this is this would imply that we found something at this point And yet it hasn't broke, which implies it's not finding that screen properly. Is everything else working on the screen? Yeah, okay. Um, and this is all part of the make file now, so I shouldn't need to shouldn't need to change anything but i think this is going to output the right files yeah this outputs screens maps directions that value is indeed being shifted by a and then the screen attribute being added and the screen attribute has that data from the color data and then this value okay something that something is not reading that value correctly so what i want to do is i want to take a look at the uh, screen data just to see that that is being loaded in correctly because i have a funny feeling it's not for some reason uh hash cap uh Find the right folder. Uh, okay, so assets sixteen bit. Are they? I can't remember where they're actually exported now. Uh, they must be in here somewhere. So. It's not there. Map screens, no. I actually don't know where it's pushing those assets. Well, let's go and have a look at. Um, is it map loader? No, uh, maps. Oh. Oh, but this is is this gen I think this file is generated. Let me just double check. I hope it is because I don't want to have to go back and do that. Because this looks like it's writing individual screen files. Oh yeah, look maps.asm. So it is writing the right thing. Uh, thanks for the follow, Gantius. Welcome to the stream, dude. Okay, so it's, it is right into the right file, which is this one here. If I just put some junk in here and see if it overwrites it, pretty sure it will. Oh, it hasn't though. Oh. Oh, it's that one there though. Is that the one we're importing? Assets 16 bit. Okay, let's just make sure we're importing that correctly. That's it. Oh, was it asset export maps stop? 
asset export. There we go. Why is that not showing on here? That is refresh folders. And... Oh, no, it's not there. Source. There we go. Source asset export. There we go. Okay. So these are our individual bin files, and this is the map data. Okay, yeah, that makes more sense. Uh, thanks for the follow, uh, Pale Automaton. Welcome to the stream, dude. Okay, so the screens are there, so I just need to find screen 13 and load that in. So that's actually in source. This one here, let's export. Screen 13. Oh, wow. Okay, right. This is going to be fun. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for the upper bytes of the screen. So let's expand this out so that it's on a on a boundary properly. Guess the game. Hmm. Oh, it's I know what it is. Somebody's got to get that, surely. No. It's a good job steps isn't here. He'd be wiping the floor with you guys. <laughs> Come on, one more. There we go, right. And then the upper byte is this area here. So you can see the attributes for various things here. But what I'm looking for is uh, a value in the lower half of this that isn't. I can't believe you didn't get that. <laughs> Oh, I should have, uh, Thalamus was closest, but, um, yeah, maybe Forbidden Forest should be allowed, actually, as a, as a thing there, yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to find in this, this area here, uh, which actually seems rather empty. I don't know why it's, I'm sure this file should be bigger than this. Hang on. Hang on, let me work this out. Uh. No, this doesn't make sense. Why is it this small? These are done per screen. Oh, it's not that small. Okay. Just get confused. Oh, no, look, there we go. Zero, four, zero, four, zero, four. So these are being, these are definitely being written into the file correctly. So these are mines. You can see here these zero fours, another one there. Another two there, another one there. So they're definitely being written into the file. So the the code that loads them in is wrong. That's all it is. Okay. Okay, that's fine. So zero four would be uh, this bit here would be set. Which means if I shift this to the right, it would definitely still be set. So a break here should actually pick it up, but it's not picking it up for some reason. So first of all, I'm going to just check that this routine is even running at all. Uh, if I just put a break point there, and this should be triggered on every... Well, it won't be triggered on, on the first screen, but we're, we're loading that into, straight into this screen. So Why is it not loaded? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so it's definitely loading this routine. Uh, thank you for the follow, DMAX7. Welcome to the stream, dude. Okay, we're, we're definitely loading that routine. And the value, I mean, I, I don't want to do this forever, but at some point I would expect this to hit the value 04. Um, which means there's something more going on here that I'm not entirely sure of. Because I would expect a breakpoint here to also trigger. The only thing I can think is maybe this map lookup is wrong. Maybe it's not 7C100 at all. So we can, I'm going to do the break. Um, if it doesn't break, then I'm going to um, go into the monitor and I'm just going to check that area of memory to see if that, if those bytes are there that I would, where I'd expect them to be. Uh, it could be that we're just cleaning those bytes as part of the map loader routine where where I haven't spotted it. Um, so let's go and do that. Uh, hang on, hang on. Have I, maybe, maybe, 
maybe what I have done. Uh, thanks for the host, Sinlo. Appreciate it, dude. Cheers. I know because we we are getting the we are getting the high bite here. Um, and it's in seven C, and we're not doing anything. This all this was doing was uh, just adding that value. Uh, and font MSB. See, this will change as well, so I need to put it to do there. I can't use it now because we've got more than 512 chars, but. Hmm. Okay, let's let's run it. Let's see if it breaks at that point. If it breaks at that point, then. I need to check the logic around this. If it doesn't break at that point, then I'm going to load the uh, the monitor up and see if I can see that data in memory. It should be there, though. What's up, Doc? <laughs> um, 07. You've broken your arm when you do that. That's a 7. See, no break point. No break point at all there. Okay, let's go into the debugger, into the uh, monitor even. Let's just have a look at that area of memory. Okay, so same area of memory that, uh, oops, I pressed go, I didn't want to press go. Uh, so again, I'm just looking for the zero fours in here. Uh, I closed the thing down, but I'm not seeing them though, which is interesting, which would imply that, oh no, they're there, look, there's a zero four. Oh, you're not going to be able to see that, but trust me, there's a zero four there, exactly where they were last time. So I don't think, I don't think we're, we're doing, oh, do you know what? I've just realized exactly what I'm doing wrong. I've just realized it. <coughs> So this routine is working, but what we're doing is when we get to the end, we're we're only adding 28. Uh, we should be adding 50 because the tiles are two by two. So going down one row, one row is not enough. We need to go down two rows. Um, sorry, not to that one, to uh, this one here. So I think now, uh, is the break point still in there? No, but I, I think it should color these now. I think that was all we were missing. Um, well, okay, I mean, it's coloured one, <laughs> um, which is better than before, uh, and it's the border has gone white, implying that it's only found one. Um, now, is that because my layout has put these on half boundaries here? On Oh, it is as well. Okay. Ah, okay. So maybe we do need to check every single character here. Because they can be on half boundaries. So I was, make, I was incorrectly making the assumption that it all sit on these tile boundaries, and they don't. Um... And that's a, I guess that's a restriction we shouldn't really impose on ourselves. So yeah, that's fine. Um, so, so in fact, out of all of those, that was the only one that was set on a tile boundary. Everything else is off the boundaries in, in various ways. So these two are off the boundary vertically. Uh, these are off the boundary horizontally. Uh, and these are both. Damn. Uh, okay. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. It just means I, I can't, I, I can't do this quickly. It has to be, um, across the whole freaking screen, uh, and, and rows. What, what we can do though, is we don't need to do 24 rows. We can do 23 because there's no point in checking the very last row because there wouldn't be a top corner. Likewise, column wise, we can do, uh, 39 and not 40 columns. So uh, 23 is 17, and column-wise, that would be 27. 
and that just means here we go back to one row and this is just one increment here not two so hopefully that should pick up so what i'm hoping to see is the border color go uh white one two three four five six seven eight nine so i'm hoping the border is going to go brown and all of these will have a red uh, top corner Yeah, the Mega Style Star Wars game does look freaking awesome. It looks really, really good. Oh, great. Everything's crashing. Be right back. Yeah, it does. There we go. So we've got a brown border. Oh, actually, it's orange. It hasn't picked this one up for some reason, which is interesting. It's picked all of these up, but it's not picked this one up. Now, is that because that is potentially ah okay i can see why that's not bit that one up also explains why we can't get through this this sprite here so i'm actually going to make uh through this object here so i'm just going to make some temporary changes here so this is one of the things andy's been doing um with his map editing he's making sure that everything is aligned properly and here it's not aligned you can see it's it's uh it's actually spanning six characters here um so i'm going to delete that and then i'm going to copy one from over here and just kind of place that there like that. Um, and now when I run it, hopefully we should see that one go the right way as well. And doing the easy part. You're not doing it's not the easy part, trust me. <laughs> that that map I, I honestly there's places on that map that I just I I don't know how it's gonna work. Um being smaller. But I you know if you say so. <laughs> I mean, I, I, there's still a problem getting through that though. I mean, there wouldn't be a problem because this would have exploded by now, but, um, okay, cool. But now, now we can identify mines. So we know that these are mines now. Uh, so that means when we go to do the update entity, instead of just turning them red, we can actually start to do some other stuff here. Uh, so, one of the things I'm going to do is um, I'm going to add some extra data to this to this list now, so that it, that there is um, some additional information here. Uh, I'm going to call it um, I'm going to call it timer um, because that's basically what it's going to be used for. Uh, but also. Uh, I'm going to have another data. I know it's data.data, .data, but I'm going to have data in here. And the reason I need two things here is because I need a timer to say how long it is until the next tip of an object. So, for instance, on these mines, it's going to be um, if you're within range, they're going to start flashing. So if this timer is, um, is non-zero, um, then what it's going to do is it's going to say this timer goes to five. What it's going to do is it's going to count down. When it hits zero, it's going to go back up to whatever it needs to go up to. But then when it does hit that zero, it's also going to trigger some extra data. In the case of the mines, it's going to be which color they're on. So it's going to flash between red and white, red, white, red, white, red, white. Um, but for for instance, say the, um, the cannons that are on the wall, um, the timer will be how often it shoots. And when, when you shoot, the data will be kind of where the bullet is or something like that. Well, maybe not actually, because it probably won't need data for that. But it's just some extra extra stuff in here. So we've got um, we've got some kind of uh, variables that we can assign to each of these uh, entities. So at the moment, we're just coloring the entity. So let's let's go ahead and uh, make them all flash for now. So um, we're just going to assume that they're, they're all going to flash automatically. Um, for now, we'll, then we'll add the, uh, I think the next thing we'll do is we'll add the uh, distance routine in and, and start applying that as well. So, uh, so let's, let's do a jump table here. So, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, uh, thanks for the follow, uh, take out Gu, Gu Hui. I don't know, even know how to say that. I'm going to call you takeout. <laughs> thanks for the follow. Uh, thanks for the follow takeout. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a jump table here, but I'm going to go for a quick break first because I'm, I'm kind of, I need the bathroom and stuff. 
I also need to go and get another cider. Um, I've got like I'm gonna I'm gonna carry on till about half twelve, one o'clock. I think I still got work in the morning, so I've got to be good. But I am gonna get through another cider before I stop. So, so I'll I'll go for a quick break. When I come back, we'll set a jump table up so we can deal with different entities having different behaviors here as well. Oh, it was right, Goofy. Okay, <laughs> take out Goofy. Cool. Yeah, I'm proud of myself for getting that. Cool. I use labels that point labels for generic data stores like that. So I confer to object dot price, object condition, depending on the code using it, but both for the same table. Yeah. Yeah, I and mean, that's the thing. I could actually add multiple labels in here for, for various things. Um depending on what the entity type is, but they would still be the same thing in the table. Yeah. That's a good idea, my beagle. I probably will do that actually. All right, I'll be back in uh three or four minutes, guys. I will try and make sure I don't stop the break this time so you get constant quiz. Be right back. I'm glad someone got that. I'd be very disappointed if somebody didn't get that. So well done. <laughs> let's stop the break. Right, let's crack on. Um, forgot what I was going to do. Oh yeah, we're going to make these flash. Okay, so we've got this property up here, timer. And we're going to create a jump table um, for some routines that we'll put down here. So. The only routine we're going to have at the moment is going to be update mines or update mine because it's going to be an, it's an individual mine here. Uh, in order to do this, we can I'll create a jump table here. I'm just going to call it jump table. Uh, and I'm actually going to split it in half to make it quicker. And then the jump table is going to contain bytes, which are going to be pointers to these. So this is entity number two. So the first entity is going to be blank. So we're not going to have anything there. And then the second entity this will eventually be something else, but for now it's going to be empty. Um, this will be update mine. So. And this will be the upper bite, upper bite of that. And then all we need to do is load a uh, table LSB. My X store that at uh, self mod JSR plus one. Oops, what did I do then? I pressed the button I didn't mean to press. And then this will be self mod JSR. Right, let's get this, this opened. So this is pushed red berries and lime bulmers. Oh, I've still got a bit in here. Oh, I've finished it. 504 chars wow okay cool that's that's gonna make life a lot easier definitely well it means i can use it means i can use these three bits which i've committed myself to now so that's good um the only thing we might have to do is create a a, a second char set just for animations um it would be very small things like the second frame of the second and third frame of the fan. They kind of, um, you know what I mean? The, the, the character animations that are in there that we, that we need that, that don't belong as part of the main char set, they'll be stored somewhere in memory and they'll be copied in when they're required, when they're needed. Um, but I'll go, I'll go through that. Once we get the, the map in and we start animating things, then we can start looking at that. It should be pretty easy to do, I think. Um, because the way that the screen loads in, there's always space at the end to, to add new characters in. So we can just add a few new characters in, um, as part of the initialization. I think you need 16 extra chars for those. Yeah. So it's going to be, it's going to take over the 512, but, um, 
Hmm, it's not, not by much though, only by eight characters. I wonder if we can strip eight characters out somehow. Because that would make it super... Uh, um, no, no, it shouldn't matter actually because we'll just we'll just put them somewhere else they'll just it, it doesn't matter it, it wouldn't make it any easier in fact it would make it a little bit trickier because that would mean a screen would also have to have the information that tells it which additional animation characters it needs whereas it would be better to just have that as a global thing so we know all fans are going to use these extra characters so uh, in this entity initialization when we register the entities if there's a mine and it hasn't, uh, if there's a a fan, for instance, and it hasn't already been uh, registered, then it will just copy those fan characters in place and store uh, a note in here to say which characters they are. Um, so it's fine. It do, they, you don't need to strip it down. I think it's fine. Uh, it, it, as I say, it, it wouldn't really, it wouldn't help in any way. I don't think. Um, okay. Okay, so we've got our lookup with this is our self mod here, and this is just going to be self mod. I always use beef because that's what I, whenever I see beef, I know it's a self mod. And that's just going to jump to in, in here. So let's just move that temporary color code and just put it in here and just make sure that that works. So it should do exactly the same as it did before, but now it's using a, it's using a lookup table to actually color these things, uh, to, a jump table to, to color them. The only real big kind of generic piece of code, there's there's obviously screen specific code that I need to add. Um, oh no, see that's, that's done something completely wrong. So it jumped to the wrong place. Did I do, what did I do wrong there? Self mod, yes, jump to the table. Uh, okay, I'm going to put a breakpoint in here, just see what we get. Um, the only the, the other big piece of code I need to put in, which potentially could be heavy, is the masking code. Um, so this is going to be a way, um, 3795, yeah, see that's wrong. I don't know where it's getting those values from. X is 8. Ah, okay. Because I'm, I shouldn't be using X, that's why. Um, yeah, the masking code. So I've got a few ideas how to do this. Uh, one idea is to have a third sprite, which we use for masking the ship, um, which is just going to be a sprite that we color in completely black and we just cut pieces out of it. Um, the other way to do it is uh, actually using a, a similar system for that, but you have, a, you have a full square instead and you just move the square around instead. But then you use uh, the cookie cutter routine. So you you set set that cookie. You set the the black square to appear behind um, behind the background, and you set the player to appear in front of the background. And then what that will do is it will actually cut a chunk out of the the player instead. Um, so I have to have a think about how how best to do that. But that's probably going to be the next big piece of code that I need to do. Okay. Um, so the problem is here. Uh, we're loading. The accumulator with the data type and it's actually that accumulator that we need in the x register so what i'm going to do so i'm going to store the x register in our update entities routine uh thanks for the follow uh jens frederick uh, frederick uh welcome to the stream dude uh okay so we've got some temps in here so I am going to use a temp in here. Update entities is called. Actually, I'm going to I'm going to create a special one in here. I'm just going to call it entity temp. Just because I don't trust this not to be updated somewhere else. So I can live in this area. It can live in the kernel safe. Uh, the sorry, the kernel non-safe area. Uh, but we're just going to use this to store this X value. So we can then get it back after this as well, because we do need to we do need to make sure that we restore that value correctly, and that means we can do whatever we want in these routines with any of the um, any of the values in here, and it should be fine. Let's get rid of that break there. 
So transfer the accumulator to X, which is then going to give us a lookup based on the type, not based on the index that we're using. So hopefully this should be fine. Oh, so hot. I'm really feeling it at the moment. Uh, okay, so <coughs> it's counted the um, the entities correctly because we've got a brown border, but it's not doing that update entity routine properly. So that's fine. Oh, wow, this is red. That's really red. Oh, it's nice though. I'm going to trigger another quiz because I'm always intrigued to see you guys' guesses on these. I'm quite pleased with how this has worked out, actually. Ooh, I think I know what this is. Yes, I do know what this is. Oh, you're going to kick yourself, Thalamus. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> you jumped the gun a little bit there. That's <laughs> it now. That's it now. You're not allowed you're not allowed to uh you're not allowed to ever mention creatures ever again now. <laughs> oh man, that's really unfortunate. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I shouldn't laugh. That's really, really, really unfair. Funny, though. Uh, okay, right, let's put a... Let's stick a breakpoint in here, just make sure this value is right, because it seems like that value isn't right for some reason. Or that X value is not being... Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh okay, no that should be should be right. Okay. Let's let's just see what that does. I can't confirm it because I can't mention it. <laughs> uh, okay, so it again though it's getting the wrong value. You can see the the routine here is pointing to somewhere completely wacky. Oh, the joy of self mod. Uh, LSB plus one, LS, MSB plus two. Oh, interesting. That should be. Oh, no, I can see. It's because. It's because our, our jump table is zero indexed and um, our entities start one, so I need to do minus one on each of these. Uh, I mean, I could add another byte zero in here, but then it's just going to be a wasted two bytes. I may as well just do a minus one on it here. How will we handle secret tunnels? Uh, yeah, so the um, the screen routine here has this init thing. So I'm I'm thinking what we can do is, on a screen that has a secret tunnel, we can define an area, a rectangle, if you like, which is um, which has no collision. Um, so, <laughs> secret tunnels in Creatures 3. Uh, Creatures 3 has been out ever since Creatures 2. It's just no one's found the secret tunnel to it. There's a secret tunnel in Creatures 2. When you go through it, it takes you to Creatures 3. Um, yeah, we'll just be able to register. Um, so, like we'd register in the entities here. When you enter a screen, you'll be able to register a secret area. Uh, and then we, rather than have separate attributes for characters, we can just define an area to have no uh, collision whatsoever. So stop these damn lights. <laughs> Is this Python? Oh, oh no, 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 not Python. Not a Python fan, I'm afraid. No, this is uh this is assembly. Six five oh two assembly. Okay, this is yeah, it's getting the proper proper label now, so um It's only colouring one in though, but that could just could just be because I'm I'm going through it. Let me turn the brake off now because it looks like it's kinda working. 
Uh, so it's this one here. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm not a fan of Python. I do use it. It is I do use it as part of my job. Or I did use it. Well, I will be using it more actually as part of my job. But um, I just rather not if I can help it. Um, okay, I don't know why it's only updating one entity here, and also one in the middle for some reason. Um, not ones down this side, so. Let's go and have a look why that might be. Because we should be calling this multiple times. Uh, okay, so one of the things we're doing here is we're, we're using X to update. And that's all obviously been changed here. But what I can do is I can load that from here anyway. So Hey steps, there we go. Let's check my finish. No, but you've missed some you've missed some pretty good quiz action. You missed Thalamus miss guessing uh, creatures, <laughs> which is which is probably my highlight of the night actually. Um right, let's, let's give you one more quiz. Steps will show you how it's done. Okay, cool. So now we have these values in here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use this uh, to start flashing uh, the, the the entities a little bit here. So um... <laughs> Eldritch got that one. <laughs> All right, Steps is not going to show you. Yeah, it is a good game. It is a good game. That's another hard game, so. Let's make an MMO in a sim. Oh, can you imagine that? That would be a nightmare. I mean, it's perfectly possible, but you wouldn't want to do it, would you? It'd be be a nightmare. All right. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna go through this timer now. So um, we're just gonna assume the mine is active. Um, in fact, we may want more than. Uh, in fact, I'm I'm actually gonna add two data elements to this because we may want more than one. Uh, so data zero and data one. And as I say, we'll add labels into these at some point. So here, this could be uh, call it index, uh, and it's active. And I'll put the data at the top. So so we can reference them as data zero. We can reference them as color index or data one or is active, um, and that should be enough, I think, for most things. Uh, how many that is in there? Probably maybe just ASM2. I've not seen that. I have to take a look at that. Ah, uh, there's no such thing as noob questions. Everybody starts somewhere. No such thing as noob questions. And you're perfectly welcome to ask as many questions as you want. So, in fact, it's encouraged. Uh, right, okay, uh, so let's, so with the mine, first of all, we want to see if it's active, but that's, that's going to be something we do after this bit. So we're just going to assume it is active for now. So I'm going to put to do in here, because that's what we're going to have to do. Uh, then if it is active, we do this thing, this thing here, and this will be, uh, coloring a value. Uh, color in uh, a screen area, which is we've kind of got set up here. Um, this would be color in four line, uh, four places instead of just two. So all we need to do here is the timer stuff. So um, we're going to load the accumulator with our data dot color. Uh, no, not data timer, isn't it? That's it. Yeah. If it's at zero, we're going to change color, which will be here. Actually, let's do uh, no color change. Let's do it that way around. If 
there is a color change, then what I need to do is I might this to be comma X. Um, well, first of all, I need to reset the timer. So let's set the timer to seven or something. It doesn't really matter. We can, we can change this value here. So I'm going to put here a flash timer. And we need to store that here. So we're resetting the timer now back to a, a, a higher value. And then we need to change the color. So we're going to grab data.colorindex.x. And the easiest way to do this is just because we're just going to toggle between uh, white and red. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the value and I'm going to exclusively or it with one, which means if it's zero, it will become one. If it's one, it will become zero. And then we can store that back here. If there's no color change, we don't need to do anything. We're just going to, we're just going to exit. However, if there is a color change, we also need to start storing this in, uh, in the screen somewhere. Um, so we're going to look up the screen here, uh, and then we're going to load the color in here. Um, but this is going to be zero or one. So we need to add, add one to this. In fact, don't need the clear there because this will never have a carry set. So that's fine like that. Um, and then we'll just do the four pieces. So it will be store the, this map lookup and then same map up lookup plus one. Oops. And then the same, but on the next row. So we start Y with 28, increase, increase. There we go. And that should update that one mine then. So this is always going to be active at the moment. So this mine is always going to be on. Uh, thanks for the follow, Spikey RJ. Welcome to the stream, dude. Uh, okay, so they've gone red, certainly, um, but they're not changing color again. Oh, I think that's because what I'm not doing um, is then decreasing the timer. So I need to make sure once it's all finished, um, I decrease, uh, not color index, data type at all. Oops. Uh, that always needs to happen. I could put an RTS there, but it doesn't really matter if it decreases by one there. It's, it's fine. As long as you're not setting it to zero, it would be perfectly all right. There we go, they're flashing there. So that's how we can make that work. Uh, let me turn off that border color. So the other thing these need to do as well is if they start to flash, they also need, uh, hmm, actually they are gonna need something else in here, aren't they? Is active. Actually, we can use the, we can use the is active as a timer as well. So we can kind of make this, twofold basically so if the entity is active it's not active it will be zero and they won't flash however if that value is is greater than zero then what we do is we start flashing and if that and, and decrease that counter and if at any point we decrease that counter back to zero again we can make it explode <laughs> lda stands for la di da <laughs> it is indeed a game in assembly yeah It's honestly not as hard as it's honestly not as hard as people think it is. I think because could you look at it and it doesn't look like you know if this for this you know while you know it doesn't have that kind of nice kind of English uh, correlation that you have with with most other languages. But um, once you get used to what the commands do, it's actually really simple. You're just pushing numbers around. That's all you're doing. <laughs> I'm glad you do, Spikey. I love you too. <laughs> I, love, I love everybody who watches. You're all great. You all keep me sane. That's what you do. You definitely keep me sane. And I think we're going to need it because I think we've got another six months of this lockdown coming. So be surprised if it's, uh, if it's over before Christmas. I honestly think it's going to be till March next year. 
maybe later. Who knows? Uh, okay, right. So we'll use the active timer as um, as a way to to check if they're going to blow up or not. Um, so what I'm going to do. First of all, I need to get the flash right. So let's go and have a look at the the original game. Um, so I don't know where that is now because it's gone through a million videos. Here we go. Let's see how fast they flash. Okay, pretty quickly actually. So let's start by doing that. Let's get that timing right. So that's this bit here. So if I change that to two, it should be a bit quicker. So. Tell me you've got tutorials. I do have tutorials, yes. There are, um, well, there you go. Andy's linked to them all, yeah. So there's some PDFs on Patreon, um, which if you want a written something written to kind of learn how to do it, um, they're on there. You only have to put, I think it's like $1 or something, and then whatever the, the uh, patron fee is. And I think it works out about $2.20 $2 or something like that with everything. Um, but there's also on my YouTube as well, um which oh, andy's done that as well i was just about to link that on my youtube there's every video i've ever done um while i've been streaming is on there so you can kind of go through that i've, I've there's playlists for various things so there's like basic introduction to 6502 um which has i think it's only got like four or five videos in it but it's a, it's a few hours of video in there to get you started uh and then you can kind of look up specific effects and tricks in the in the dissect streams or you can kind of follow um the game streams that we've been doing as well so uh the check noise streams are patron only um for youtube but everything else is is there um but yeah yeah just just dig in and if you have any questions as well just join the discord i don't know if i did andy do the discord can i catch him out no he didn't wait hey. He joined the Discord there. <laughs> oh, why didn't that pop up? Oh, it did. No, it didn't. Hang on. Okay, there is a Discord. Oh, it was just very slow. There you go. Uh, yeah, if you join the Discord, you can ask questions in there. There's loads of really helpful people in the Discord um, from all kind of levels of skill, um, from kind of beginners who are just kind of just joining the streams for the first time or or just kind of learning 6502 for the first time uh, right up to people who are very very familiar with not just the commodore 64 but all sorts of systems as well uh, i do game boy uh development on uh tuesdays as well that that's a little bit more sweary because i don't like the the game boy cpu very much at all <clears throat> Uh, good night, Andy. Good good luck at work again tomorrow. I'm sure you're. I'm sure you're doing all right. Um, but yeah, just hope it goes well for you. I hope it continues being fun. Are they flashing blue? I think they're flashing blue, aren't they? Or is it just my eyes seeing that? Hang on. Oh, it's just my eyes seeing blue when it's not. They look cyan when it flashes between red and white. They look cyan. <laughs> um okay so i think that's kind of roughly I, I think it's a bit slow but actually i'm going to leave it like that for now i can adjust the timings later but what i'm going to do now is i'm going to make them explode after a certain amount of time so let's start by making them all active um so in in here i'm going to give them uh some kind of timer in here before they explode i'm just going to set them to 60 for now um this is this is all the data that because there's going to need to be reset in fact i'm going to do that in here rather than do it somewhere else um uh, okay we've got a y value that's been used No, I'll do it here because the, the active value is not going to be set straight away. It's going to be set when you get close to it. So this value will go, uh, okay, part of this routine will be to check if you're close to this mine. If you're close to this mine, then it's going to set the active value. So we'll do it here, um, do it up there, and then we'll use this value here. Okay, so 
what we're going to do is we're going to count how many times it changes color and that's what that thing is going to do uh which actually makes it probably a bit too high let's do uh 20. it's probably not even that actually it's probably well let's do 20 so we can see it happening um and then in this change color so whenever it changes color Uh, we're going to do here check for explode so what we're going to do is we're going to take the value in is active and decrease it and if that is not zero we're just going to skip ahead but we'll call it skip however if it does explode then we just need to make it explode quite simple really um, and we do have routine to do this. So first thing we need to do is we need to set zero as a type. Um, uh, which will stop it from flashing. And then we need to make it explode. Now, uh, we already have a routine in, I can't remember what it was now, uh, destroyable, here we go. When we hit something, um hit piece here we go it has hit points here and we can make it explode so what we could do is we could set the uh the hit points to be zero at this point um and then make it explode however they're not being registered in the list yet so i need to add that i'm gonna have to add that very soon i think yeah i am gonna have to add that um Oh yeah, books. They should be with you fairly soon, I think. I did get a message that the uh the the games that weren't was in Hong Kong or something, so I th I think that's kind of due fairly soon, probably next week I'd say. I don't know about the other ones. Um but yeah, I think I think you should get that one first. I think I think that's kind of had the easiest chip in. Um, hmm. Okay. So what's bothering me here is um, I don't have a proper explosion for this per se. I would have to call this reduce hit points, and because it's not a persistent object yet. Um, it's not gonna it's not gonna blow up so i'm gonna have to add some persistent objects in here so let's go in here additional info power up type okay so it isn't a power up type um and i don't know how many bullets it takes to kill one of them so in fact in most cases you don't get a chance to shoot them so i'm gonna have to test that out so for now i'm just gonna put um a couple in here in fact i'm gonna have to put them all in here aren't i okay fair enough let's do that okay so definitely need to update my script to do this for me because this is getting a bit tedious now okay so let's do the materials first so they need to be oh why is that not showing the materials oh it's on here isn't it paper boy who got that eldritch nice so one three four five is what i need to do so uh one oh, which is here okay one three that's the weird one that's over a few so it's not that one four five okay so that's the materials but now i need to find out where these locations are um so 44 is the top oh god okay this is i need to write these down yeah definitely i need to get this done in the script fairly soon in fact uh if you're happy with the char set as it stands now, Thalamus, it'd be good if you could send the what you what you have so far to me, and then um, I can kind of start writing proper routines to do this um, in the in the char pad exporter, and start working out which are going to be our base characters and not, and start doing some analysis of individual screens. Um, because I don't necessarily need the proper screen. I can just do, again, some temporary um, 
some temporary kind of screens in like, like I've got now, but with proper character values. Okay, so we have remember again forty forty eight. Okay, so these are it's in a Y and the Y's Okay, yeah, so I need to add one to each one. Okay, right, so forty forty eight. So this would be eight fourteen. Hang on, is that right? Yeah, 14. Okay, 8, 9, 10, 11, 14. Oops. I've got my keys are in the way. Uh, uh, so this would be 17, 14. Oh, this, this definitely needs to be in a script. I can't can't be doing this on every page. And uh, this is thirty five fourteen, okay. And this row is gonna be fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seven, eighteen. And there's two of these on this row. And they are at fourteen and twenty one. And then the bottom row is eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one. Wait, it's much wrong there. Oh, it's because that's on Twitter. Oh, okay, that's fine. Okay, 18, 19, 20, 21. Yeah, 21. All right. And there's three on this row, and they are at the same positions as the first three up there. So 8, 11, and 17. Okay, so let me just add these into here. Um, so. Uh, let's just give them one hit point so they'll destroy pretty quickly and the type of zero because I don't want them to be of a power up type at all. So it's 8, 11, 17, 35. <coughs> Ooh. There we go. Uh, and then that's the last three are the same as well. Whoops. I'll put these are on row 21. And then that means there's two more in the middle, which are both on row 18. And uh, 0 e one five. Okay, cool. So that should give us uh, destroyable objects on that screen. That's, that's quite a lot of data there, but um, it should be fine. Uh, let's just double check the entity stuff down here. This is just going to continue. Uh, they're just going to stop flashing after a short while, okay? So what we should see now is that they should flash 20 times and then stop. Um, I want to say flash 20 times, change color 20 times and then stop, but they should be destroyable as well. Well, that 20 times was very quick, but yeah, okay. Uh, but they're not destroyable. Why is that? Interesting. Uh, oh, I know why, because I've got to actually save it here. They should be destroyed. No. Okay. I mean, it's obviously detected that they are destroyable now, but now we're getting um, sorts of weird stuff. So first of all, I just want to check that these still explode correctly. I've not broken these, which they do. Okay. Oh, interesting. Uh, 
Hmm. They seem to only explode from one direction, which is... Yeah, they only explode on that bottom corner for some reason. One, three, four, five. One, three, four, five. Everything looks fine here. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, because these I can I can hit them from any direction and they'll. Uh, okay. Let's try that one over there. Yeah, it's that bottom corner they need to hit for some reason. Um, hmm, where might that be? They're still entity. They're, well, it doesn't matter that they're entities. They're destroyables. That's the main thing. They're still destroyables. And the screen itself. Maybe I'm getting these values wrong. Yeah, I think that's maybe what it is. All right, let's have a look. So let's see if we can find this one. So this is a, a two across. Yep, yeah, three down which is, yeah, because it's plus one, okay. And they have two hit points, and they don't do anything else. Okay, that seems to be fine. And then next one here is 15 across, which starting at four zero. Oh, hang on, are these in? No, that's fine. Is it 21? Yeah, that's fine. So maybe I'm just getting these wrong. Hang on. So it should be eight. 61. Uh, no, that should be fine. That seems to be blowing up incorrectly for some reason. 14. Hang on, let me count these. 1, 2, 3. Start at 1, yeah. So 1, 2, 3. Yes, yeah, so start at 1. 1, 2, 3, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, which is what I've got. Oh, okay, that's weird. Is it because I put one hit? No, one hit point shouldn't matter. Interesting. And they should definitely be picked up as destroyable objects. Um, but for some reason, only this bottom corner is actually being destroyed, letting it be destroyed. <laughs> huh. Okay, uh, let's take a step back. Let's um right, first of all, can uh, these yeah, these destroy from any direction. I can point down. So I don't know why they wouldn't destroy properly. In that way, they are in the first half of the char set, so uh, the same as the rest of them. Uh, hmm, okay. Um, okay, first of all, I want to get rid of that brown border because that's annoying me, so let's get rid of that. Uh, and I'm not doing anything else in here. If I just return from this, so I don't do any flashing or anything. I just literally just return from this function. So they won't they won't do the flash. It shouldn't matter though, because it, it's the flash is set, but this is the entity behavior is on top of the, the normal I'm an explosive object behavior. But look, they do something weird when I hit it in the right place. I don't know why that is, because they're just explosive objects like the rest. Top half, no. Bottom half, yes. Maybe I've just got the, pos the Y positions wrong, but I thought I'd already worked that out. I can just change these to D. This is, this is why I definitely need that script, because if this is wrong, no, then I've just wasted some time just because I've... <laughs> Use bits plus text-to-speech, yeah. 
or just do listen as well. You don't you don't have to do bits like that. Grab and buy the poswa. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Very good. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Hayes. Well, maybe it needs to be one more because it's it's not letting me explode them at all now. Uh, so maybe if I do F in here instead. Um, and this is why I need that script. I definitely need that script to to. Can you call Thalamus to chat, please? If he's not around, I don't know how to get out. Well, I mean, you could contact him on um, Discord. No, it's on a timer. Hayes wasted it, telling me okay. What is going on there? Look, I, know, I can still move around. Right, I, I really need to uh, go to the bathroom, so I'm going to have to take a short break. Um, I'll continue till about one o'clock. I want to fix this bug before I continue. Uh, before I, I leave tonight, or or if it gets to one o'clock, I'm not gonna uh, I'm not gonna stay up too late, but I'm gonna hopefully uh, hopefully fix it before then. Um, just make sure I haven't missed anything. Uh, yeah, all right, cool. Right, I'll be back in two or three minutes, guys. Bring it back. Uh yeah, I turn the I turn the audio. I've just turned the alert off as well. <clears throat> Why? Yeah, and it's another. I mean, it's completely filled my freaking thing up again. <sighs> why do they? Why do they do this to me? What the hell? Okay, uh, be ready to. It might go to uh, sub only in a minute if it's uh, if they start posting links. But yeah, we're being follow spammed. I've got. I mean, let me just see if the alert's still going. Hang on. Uh, oh no, it's stopped actually, I think. Maybe because I turned it off on the other screen. Emote only chat, yeah. <laughs> Do whatever you think, Hayes. You're you're the mod. <clears throat> I I don't know why they do it though. I don't I don't know what it's what purpose it's it serves. I mean that's easily. I I can't even count. I don't know. I don't know how many that is. It's a lot though. In my lists. It is weird, yeah. I don't got it at all. And why do they? Why do they do it to me? They don't do it to anybody else. Yeah, let let's see what happens. Maybe they're um. Let me stop the break. Let me one more one more quiz and then break or stop. Okay. <clears throat> let's see if they spam. Um. I can't think why they would do it though, because I mean, you you don't have to follow to spam, so um, I don't, I'm not sure what, what purpose it serves at all. It might be tested. Yeah, maybe. Oh god, what's that? Oh, I know what that is. <clears throat> Let's see if anybody gets this. Oh. <laughs> Steps, you fucked that up. <laughs> oh. oh, dear.
Uh, okay, right. So we, we've got a problem where these are not being picked up properly. I think the original values for these are correct. I think that is right. But I don't know why it's not picking more up. Um, you can't tell if chat is being spammed. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a good point, actually. It would, <laughs> they can try spamming it, but we, we'll outspam them. Um, okay, I've kind of lost my um, train of thought in it. Okay, so how many of these have we got? 6, 7, 10, 13, 17, 21. Yeah, I mean, not enough to break the, the loop. 26, it's only half of the loop, less than half. But they're just not destroying properly for some reason. And they don't have any other attributes. Well, actually, no, they do have. Ah, maybe it's to do with this extra attribute that's being added here. Okay, let's let's turn that off in the in the parser. Uh, so the map parser actually adds that value in here. So let's just turn that off so that they don't flash or anything. And let's just see if that fixes it, because maybe it's just the combination of the two that's causing an issue. <clears throat> Mm -mm. Oh, you see now they're working properly. Okay, okay. So I think what we need to do here then, I'm going to put the char pad parser back. Okay. Um, so I think when it starts looking to see if we can destroy it, I think there's a problem with the values that it's it's looking at. So here's where we hit now that's we've actually hit it at that point. It's so removing the piece. It's not that. It's gonna be it's gonna be in here somewhere. <clears throat> oh no we're ending with F0. We are doing that and with F0. Okay, let me, I'm going to do that thing again with uh, with the hex editor. We're going to go and have a look at the values that it creates. So it's screen 13. It's going to be down here somewhere. So these are the values here, 1, 4, 1, 4, 1, 4. Um, so the values are correct. There's nothing in those values that would imply that they're, they're wrong. Good night, Doxter. Thanks for joining the stream, dude. Yeah, I'm not I'm I'm gonna do another half an hour or something, so um and then I'm gonna call it a night as well. I was kinda hoping Wait. Oh. Okay, guys, that was about six thousand follows, by the way. Check my follow count. That's annoyed me that. That has really annoyed me. I just noticed my follow count, some 8,000 and something. <sighs> God damn it. All right. What's this? Oh, the AT&T thing. Thing is, that last time I contacted Twitch, they, they told me there's nothing they can do about it, that some of them will disappear. But... Um... I mean, the, the alert has stopped happening now, so I can probably... Let me just turn my Muxy alerts up again. Yeah, they've stopped... It's stopped making a noise now anyway, so... Let me just test out the last one. Yeah, okay, so... <clears throat> well, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Pains in the asses they are, because I don't know what my true follow account is anymore. It's it's super inflated and it means kind of nothing now. Ah, uh, whatever. Okay. All 
Um, I'm kind of kind of frustrated now. That's kind of put me off, put me off my flow. Um, okay, right. So this is where we're removing an item, and this is what's doing the check. But oh, oh, here we go. Okay, so anytime I look up a collision point, I now need to do this as well. Otherwise, it's just going to keep going. So yeah, that is the, that's the problem there. Okay. Right, collision point, collision point. Don't need to do it in here. Okay, that should be fine now, I think. So we should see them flash, but I can blow them up now as well. Yeah, I'm. I'm kind of. I'm a bit pissed off about that, to be honest. Okay, they're not flashing. Oh, they're not flashing because I've told them not to flash now. Yeah, that's fine. But yeah, they're blowing up correctly now. That's good. All right. Uh, okay, so in entities, in that case, we can turn this back on. And now all we need to do is if they're if they've blown up. So at this point here. We just need to say, okay, this object has blown up. So there is a remove in destroyable, uh, reduce hit points. Okay, so systems look up or why? Exit and remove. Hmm, okay, it's probably need a little bit of trickery to get this to work. Because this is reducing hit points when a bullet hits it, so we've got this here. We found an object and we jump to reduce hit points. And then reduce hit points tries to find the X and Y from destroy X and destroy Y. Okay, so actually in here what we need it's not just the screen, uh, LSB and MSB, but we also need the X and the Y. Which means we need to change this a little bit. So, um, register entities. Okay, so here is where we're actually grabbing uh the screen look up stuff we we found something at this point so y should be our um our x value so we can store transfer y to the accumulator and store that at um data dot x x and then we just need to grab the column uh, the row, sorry, this bit here. So uh, what I'm going to have to do here instead is count this the other way. So we're going to start at zero here. Um, actually, it's going to have to start at one now. And we'll do it this way. Okay, so increase row, making it a row, compare. One seven is twenty three, so this now needs to be one eight. No, hang on, one nine. So we're starting at row one. We need twenty four, which is one eight. So if this goes to one nine, then we're finished. Okay, and then here we can do. That. And then in here, when we want something to disappear, which I'm probably going to, I'm, I'm going to have to update this to kind of explode an entity sort of thing. Um, so actually, let's, let's do it here, explode entity. Uh, and we're going to pass in, uh, pass in X as index. Uh, 
and then explode an entity is basically going to be grabbing data dot x comma x store that at destroy x data hang on if I've done I've done something wrong here hang on oh we need to make sure we yeah yeah we just need to make sure we save x that's fine And then we can jump to destroyable dot reduce hit points. Although that is actually going to, no, it's not that we want. It's, I oh, know we do need to reduce the hit points. So have they got one hit point? So we're going to have to change this to, um, actually reduce the hit points to zero. So there might need to be another routine in the destroyable reduced to zero uh, or, or a parameter that we can pass in, but this should be off, I think, or RTS. Um, is X being stored anywhere? Entity temp. So, okay, let's give that a try. So hopefully now uh, these should explode when they have when they run out. I'm, I'm a bit dubious about this. Destroy X was a musician you saw live in Brisbane one night while waiting for another band. Ah, he's now immortalized in, in Commodore 64 code. So I'm expecting these to explode now. I mean, yeah, they tried to, but they didn't exactly work correctly. So um, they did the explosion, but they didn't remove this. And also, maximum explosions is a constant, isn't it? Yes, yeah, six. So it's only doing six explosions. Okay, so let's make that. Let's make that ten. Uh, why did it remove them then? It should be removing them as well. And the match it needs removing. Is there anything else I need to say in here? It doesn't look like it. Everything else is being calculated from the screen. I'm going to try again. Let's see if we get that many. He wasn't a terribly good musician. <laughs> oh, well. Okay, so... What I'm failing to understand is why it's not removing the, those sprites now. Um, let's put random values into it. I just want to test some stuff out here. So just instead of 20 in here, I'm going to do uh, random times 20 plus, let's do times 50 plus 20. Um, and floor it so we get. Uh, okay, so what's the difference between hitting it with a bullet or this method here. Find a match that needs removing. So why is it not being removed? This should be removing it here. Uh, but it's not for some reason. But if we shoot them, they will. But I mean, if we shoot them before they actually disappear. Let's see if I can shoot one before it disappears. Okay, so if I shoot it before before they stop flashing, then it will die. However, just the act of them stopping flashing is not removing them, so...
exit and remove. So it's doing this. Oh, hang on. Because it's we're using this carry flag to drop out and do the rest of this. So actually what we should be doing is hit piece instead. Oh god, okay. Um Which means all of this screen point stuff needs to be set up. Ah, okay. Yeah, this is getting a bit more complicated now. Remove item. Okay, so. Yeah, I think I might do this on. I might do this on the next stream because this is. I I've kind of lost my train of thought probably because of that stupid follow spam. Um, but basically, what's going on here? Fox <laughs> just shut off my god. <laughs> Foxes are dicks, aren't they? They really are. Game is that? No, oh, I know. Oh, I, oh well. I know the. I know the. Hmm, I don't know which one it is. I'm sure there was more than one. Is that the one it was? Maybe. <laughs> just, so it just headbutted your cat flat, basically. I gotta have a guess. Oh, I type it quick now. Hey. <laughs> Yeah, it was either that or CJ in the USA. I couldn't remember which one it was. So I just took a guess. Um, okay, so I probably need to refactor the destroyable stuff a little bit better. Because uh, at the moment, it's very much based on hitting it with a bullet. So either I have to fake it being hit by a bullet by calling this routine after setting these things up. Which will trigger the particles, um, and this is essentially all we really need is the particles. Um, so maybe I could get around this by setting screen point up. Let me try that actually before I go. So I'm just going to put a routine called force here. Let's destroy offset. Uh, oh no, because that's just one piece. So that's not good enough either, because that's just going to do one piece. This is clearing that individual piece. So this actually needs to go through every single piece. Um, Piece Y, piece Y. Yeah, I need I need to think about this a little bit because this routine is very much set up to deal with bullets. So it might need a different routine to to actually get rid of the item. So the explosion is working, but the particles are not working, and that's because I, I need to kind of fix this routine a little bit. All right, it's fine. Uh, it's a job for the next stream, I think. I'm going to call it a night there. Um, <clears throat> thanks for coming along, guys. Um, let's go and find someone to raid, actually. Um, apologies for the crazy spam. I don't know what to do to stop them. Oh, to be fair, it's only twice it's happened in 18 months, but um, it's twice too many. And it's really kind of fucked around with my follow account now, which is a bit annoying. It was already kind of bad, so... Um, but now it's really bad. Uh, oh, let's go and return the favor on a uh, naysayer because he seems to be seems to be on again. Unless I'm, unless my stream's knackered. Hang on, let me just check. <clears throat> oh no, he's on. All right, let's go and raid naysayer. Let's return the favor. Um, cool. All right, bigfollows.com really works. <laughs> 
Okay, cool. It's going right now. So I don't know what he's doing, but um, we'll soon find out, I'm sure. Um, cool. Thanks, guys. And I shall see you all uh, on Saturday. So, uh, yeah, I'll see you then. Uh, thanks for joining the stream and take care, guys. Uh, where's the button? There it is. One more for 69. Yeah, come on, come on. Uh, no mind. 68 will do. All right, take care. See you Saturday, guys. Thank <clears throat> you.